think you've got the secret to happiness, man. I think you do. Yeah, I think so. Thank you so much for not having any children. Anytime, dear. I've really gotten my act together in the past year, and it's all because of you, Dad. I, I, I appreciate it. I got at least 10 women I can call right now who will come over here and do my every desire because of the things that Tom Ikes has taught me. Kids are going to come along, and I believe this is what's killing America, is your little theory here. It's killing America. I am killing America. People that think that their only sense of accomplishment is to have a child and that it's inevitable that kids are going to happen anyways. You might as well do it when you're 19 or 20 or 21. Those are the people that are raising, producing and raising losers. Losers. You are so important in my life because I talked like everything you said and people look sideways at me. And then when I heard you, that gave me permission to live my life the way it made me happy. Every day is like a vacation when I wake up and I can do whatever I want. I got to tell you, this whole Tom impersonator thing does not just go to my face. I actually DJ and host karaoke at a bar, and I overheard this incredibly ugly, dorky guy telling one of my regulars, yeah, I'm in broadcasting. I'm on 97.1. You may have heard my show. My name's Tom Likas. (laughs) After I got done laughing, um, I not only left him in front of the girl and told him that this is not Tom Likas, I made an announcement on the microphone. No! Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we've got a celebrity in the house. This guy says he's Tom Likas. And people started laughing. Uh, hang on a second. Courtney, what did you want to say to David? Bro, did you just say you're considering getting rid of your dog that you've had for four years? No, I said that was an ongoing argument we had. I will not get rid of my dog. Well, why are you tolerating an argument? Why There should be no argument. That's your dog. No, I know. I mean, Tom, that's a pussy. Big time. I already know that. Thank you, Courtney. Since I moved to the States, the term princess was completely new to me when I moved over here. Any woman that refers to herself or other women as princesses is the wrong kind of woman. I completely agree with you, and thank you so much. In fact, you saved my sister's marriage, too. (laughs) Really? Yes, we both listened to you completely. Imagine if I could have saved one of my own marriages. Wow. I am a uh, fourth-year UCLA student, and I have a little bit of a dilemma. Next year, my roommates are going abroad um, to go study, and um, I need a roommate for next year, which I've been un- unable to By find. the way, I've been studying abroad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I took her panties off, and I studied her up close. Guys, just be honest about what you're looking for, what you want, and you'd be surprised how many women aren't too far off the map for the same thing. Call me tonight about midnight, and if we're not doing anything, I'll come over there, get the job done, I'll get the hell out of your hair. Was that you I called last night? I think it was. A little drunk dialing, wasn't it, dear? I'm an ENT, so we're listening to you five days a week on the ambulance. When you read that letter a couple uh, weeks ago, that married man said, divorce his wife. We held a patient in the back for a little bit longer. Really? Great. Did he Did he survive? Oh, yeah, he's fun. All right, just check it. All right, Tom. Yeah, well, well, we were enjoying the show so much that we left the patient in the cab, and and, and he died. But it was (laughs) such a good show, it was worth it. We're sacrificing lives for you, Tom. From in Hollywood... It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, Kevin. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's every kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-8. Six six. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on this Friday. With wide open telephones, anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Oh, we had quite a week this week. 
You saw that study that said that angry women are viewed as incompetent? And I told you that I have a zero-tolerance policy for angry women, any expressions of anger, yelling, screaming, scene-making, whatever, scene-causing, out. If they do that, they're out. Zero tolerance. We talked about how women with MBAs are more likely to divorce than men, and not only that, they're about one-third as likely to be married as men with MBAs. Wow. I said no surprise here. We talked about the size 16 Miss England hopeful named Chloe and her first official bikini shoot. By the way, that's still on our website, blowmeuptom.com, if you'd like to see that. And we uh, talked about a piece called Too Successful for a Mate. Many of you emailed this piece to me. The uh, subheader on the piece had said, Today's talented, ambitious women are staying single in droves. Are they too busy, too picky, or horrors, it says here, too awesome? Oh, please. Yeah, the last thing a guy wants is a woman who's awesome. They're too awesome. And I'm too sexy for my shirt. A break. We can talk about any of those issues. Also, this was the week we announced uh, that Dean J. DeBilio had uh, cleaned out the 35 fakes who had created fake Tom Likas MySpace pages. And we announced that we officially had gone live on MySpace with our own MySpace page, which is myspace.com slash Tom Likas or if you can't spell my name because you're new to the show, go to blowmeuptom.com, and there's a link there. And we are flooded with responses. Flooded. <laughs> it's really kind of crazy. And Dean has been, uh, has been occupying most of Dean's time this week, I'd say. We have over 1,500 friends now. Over 1,500 friends in quotes. I've never heard of most of these people. But who knows? If I ever have something to sell, I'll send you all a bulletin and I'll sell it to you. It's that simple. We can talk about any of that. We can talk about anything we didn't get into this week. Maybe there's something you think we should have talked about. Maybe you just wanted to call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the phone. It's that simple. You just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. That's the telephone number. And uh, if you're calling from another country, you can call us on our international number. The country code is 1. The area code is 323. And the phone number is 520-6211. This week we had calls from Islamabad, Pakistan. We had a uh, call from Canada. We had calls from several countries this week. And uh, if you are outside the United States, this is the one and only number that will work for you. And uh, this is a good time to call right at the beginning of the hour. Country code 1, area code 323, phone number 520-6211. It's that simple. So here we are. It's Friday, and I also want to remind you that Flash Friday is coming. It will be the first Friday in June. We are not going to be held a slave anymore to the daylight savings time clock because daylight savings time is starting way too early for Flash Friday. So Flash Friday is a summer thing beginning the first Friday after Labor Day. You got that down? Make a note. Get ready. Your telephone calls are coming up. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOWN. Like 1-800-5800-866. Please, man, listen. Listen. Tie yourselves up. Go put a condom on. Pay attention. Women are sick. It's the Tom Likey Show. The 
Tom Likas Show Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here comes Sarah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Daddy. Hi, dear. How are you? Doing great. Good. Um, I was calling because I wanted to, you were talking about marriage a lot last Friday with those guys, and you were calling them stupid. And pretty much most of them were, but they need to realize that you should not get married if it's going to take your income and decrease it. You should only marry for, um, you know, if you're going to better your wealth or it's going to stay the same. And, but the thing is, some guys get duped because they meet a woman who makes a lot of money today. Uh, and they don't realize that woman's game plan is to get the man to earn some money, maybe not even as much as she makes, so she can then take time off and have a kid. And yeah, she may well, never go that. back to work. Well, yeah, maybe they could write that up in the prenup because I, you know, I read this philosopher. He was in the 1700s, and man, I swear, you're just like him. He basically, you know, he said that, and then he also went on to say, you know, that you should not have children if it's going to decrease your value as well. And, you know, basically he said the rich get richer and the poor get children, and that is uh-huh. true. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, my husband and I, we got married very young, but we both made the same money. We were super wealthy, have a big, beautiful home with four bedrooms, and we are playing pool at our brand-new pool table last weekend, and my husband looks at me and says, you know what, honey? I don't want kids. Why Why would we give up this for kids? Why would we give up everything we've earned to be, you know, lacking? You know, why would we give up our Harley and our brand-new cars and, you know, our fun times and be able to just go out of town at the drop of a hat? Not to mention the fact you guys get along great. Why would you want to risk that? Exactly, exactly. So some of these guys, you you know, who you say that to, it's true. They shouldn't get married. But if they do find somebody who thinks exactly like them, I don't think that there's a problem with getting married, especially if you're both wealthy and you both love the same things. You know, I but love there's no, that but again, the there's no benefit. The Here's the thing for a man. There is no benefit to get married. Well, what if she's a trust fund baby like me? Then there's some benefit. Only if I could uh, potentially divorce you and take what you have. Oh, Tom, that's not very nice. That would be the only incentive for doing it. Well, what if it? No, and I also think that you should only get married to the person that you've had the best sex with for the, in the in your life. But the and person you've had the best sex with in your life, if it's a man, is generally the most irresponsible individual. Be- well, because you really can't compartmentalize your life. You know, if you're crazy in the sack, you're crazy everywhere else. Yeah, but the crazy women are always good in the sack. <laughs> they <laughs> are. But that. they're also crazy everywhere else. Um. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not crazy, though. Are you that good in the sack? Uh, yeah, I'm crazy in the sack, definitely. Really? <laughs> yes. Maybe you're crazy than you admit. Well, maybe a little bit, but they make medication for that, so it's okay. I understand. All right, Sarah. (laughs) Well, blow me up, Tom. I'll blow you up, baby. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Father Tom, how you doing? Doing okay, Kevin. All right. uh, I heard you say last week that uh, guys have no interest in going to prom. No, but they uh, don't. They will have no. There is no benefit to taking a girl to the prom. Correct. But I have a little strange situation here. Um, This girl I haven't talked to in about seven months. She she called me the other day and she asked me to her prom. Right. That's because she couldn't get anyone else to invite her. No, no, no. She invited me, and she's paying for my ticket completely. That's because she couldn't get anyone else to invite her. She's an 8 out of 10, man. Again, she's doing it because she can't get anyone else to invite her. Women are the cheapest creatures on earth. If a a woman is offering to pay, it's because no one else will invite her for free. So she's offering just to pay for my ticket because... No one else will because no one else will invite her, correct? All right. All right, well, can you take me out with a bong rip in uh, John Ritter style? I certainly can. <laughs> one 
one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. The international number, I'll give you one more time, is country code 1, area code 323-520-6211. And you can get through on that line right now, but you have to dial right now. Mike on the Tom Ligas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you doing on this beautiful Friday? I'm doing just great. Uh, I keep hearing how, you know, poor people always have kids, right? Intelligent people never have kids. Which is, of course, uh, a lie, because there are intelligent and wealthy people with kids, and there are poor people who don't have kids. But generally speaking, poor people have kids, and they have more of them. Very true. Also, rich people have kids, and they forget about parenting. Would you agree on that? I don't know what you mean. Okay, well, I'm an education, right? First of all, I'm in Nordvaldi's. I'm not going to say poor people because it's not a poor thing. It's just uneducated people having kids. You know what I'm saying? Well, of course, but they're generally uneducated and poor because think about it. Uh, uneducated poor people are not aware, apparently. And the more kids you have, the poorer you will be. That, that is very true. But there are some uneducated people who just fall into money sometimes. That's rare. It is very rare. You're right. But what I'm just saying is, for people that are educated, I want them to have kids. Yeah, well, why would they want to? Why would they want to? We well, are smart enough to know not to do that. Very true. But see, if these uneducated people keep having kids, that means that, I don't know, when they retire and say they want to go to wherever they want... There's going to be no educated people left to run these kinds of things. I don't need any uh, educated people. I need somebody to bring me a pina colada. But you need someone Doesn't to take do a Rhodes Scholar to do that. You need someone to book your tickets to the flight, right? I need people to knock up their girlfriends today <laughs> so they will be working in the travel agency tomorrow. Very true. But if they're uneducated, how the hell are they supposed to book something for you? Oh, how come you, on. Come on. Come on. Now, I have a great travel agent, and I don't want to diss her, but let's be I'm, honest. I'm, I'm not does saying, it really I'm not take saying. Does it really take a college degree to be a travel agent? No, they don't, but they have to have a high school education to be one. Well, again, you know, there are people uh, who, uh, by the way, you have to understand, my parents were of average intelligence at best, and they were super poor. So just because you are poor and uneducated doesn't mean you cannot have kids who get rich or might be smart. Very true, but it's hard to help your child with their homework. My parents couldn't help me with my homework. Oh, I understand that. And I'm sitting here right now. You're right, and you're a hard worker. Well, okay, so now now you're adding in that, they, uh, that, that the children of poor people, you're assuming they're going to be lazy. No, 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 I'm talking about the new generation as a whole is lazy. Why would you say that? easy look at test scores look at look at look at average scores around this world it keeps going down lower and lower that's that's just not true it's not no okay no there are school districts in the united states where reading scores have gone down and what have you but generally speaking i think the world is more educated not less i think the internet has has done amazing things that is true. Internet has those ama amazing things, but not everything. Now let's face it. Most also. of what you do online is reading and writing. Very true, but not all of it's true. On top of that, nothing regular. That's not the point. You, you don't zigzag all over the place. Are you talking about literacy? Right. Let's face it. You have to be able to read and write in order to use the Internet. Uh, Not write, but read. <laughs> well, you do have to be able to write something. True. www whatever. No, but you you do. Uh, people send instant messages. They they have blogs. They read blogs. They respond to blogs. I honestly, and by the way, the proof is in the pudding. Look how many young people are involved in politics now. That is true. Which this was not true twenty years ago. It was not. However, there was no. Uh, how do I put this? Um, candidates who are actually uh, targeting the youth either. Am but right? but they didn't have a way to reach them. That is true. And now they do. That is very right. So, uh, you know, you're making a lot of assumptions, and I think we've proven here that, uh, you know, these are just not only generalizations, some of them are downright wrong. They are assumptions. There's no hard data to prove it, so you're right about that. Okay.
All right, Mike, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's Becca on the Tom Langus Show. Becca's calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Okay, I have a little problem with this guy I've been dating for about a year now. We've been dating on and off. And he seems to think that at this point we need to move forward in our relationship and move in together get married, have kids, whatever, I'm, I'm, and I'm just not into that. And he seems to think there's something wrong with me because of that. So I guess I'm looking for some way to explain to him that the way I'm thinking, he should be right along with it and be happy. <laughs> well, you can't make him be happy if that's who he is. You probably need somebody else. Yeah. So when he's constantly trying to pick fights with me and I'm like, you know, I'm not going to fight with you about this, call me later, and I just leave, I I'm doing the right thing. I don't I'd say it's there. time to forget it. It's time to go. I wouldn't tolerate that. What if the sex is so good? I don't darling, want to give that up. darling, they don't call it Portland for nothing. Okay. Plenty of other sex out there. Okay. I've got a room full of guys who will fly up to Portland tonight. They will not even ask your last name. They will just fly in, get the job done, and get the hell out of Dodge. Well, they they will get the hell out of Stumptown. They'll be out. So there's not something wrong with me by continuing to just want to date and not move forward with it. No. Okay. By the way, did I hear that Heather Mills is moving to Portland? I don't know. I hope not. Just I didn't. I figured they call it Stumptown for a reason. Oh, okay. No, sometimes some good coffee, though, that's for sure. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Becca. <laughs> okay, can you take me out the bong hit, Tom? I certainly can. <coughs> it's 1-800-5800-TOM. Here's William on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, William. Man, I'm talking to a legend. I can't believe it. Look at you. Man, I've been waiting to talk to you for 10 years. That's how long I've been listening to you. Since high school, buddy. Since high school. Why have you been waiting so long? Man, because I wanted wanted to prove to my father that I was able to call us. And that finally I am. I love that. When I was in high school, Tom, I was banging all the hot cheerleaders. The ones that had boyfriends because of you. You taught me how to talk to them. It was because of you. So you treated them like crap. Hell yeah. I'm not a good-looking guy, Tom, by all means. I'm not. I'm like 200 pounds, and you know what? I bang the hotties. Their their boyfriends are like, you know, crying all over them. Oh, how could you cheat on me? And here I am walking around campus like not even a good-looking guy, and I'm laying pipe. Oh, boy. I, now, that, there's nothing more fun than laying pipe with somebody who is with somebody else. Well, you just have to say it. It's great, Tom, and you know what? I was banging cheerleaders and their friends, and in one in one case, I even had a threesome. This really? Was in high school. This was in high school, Tom. Thanks to you, because of you, I didn't want a girlfriend. I went to college. I got my bachelor's in history. Now I'm shooting for my master's. Eventually, I want to get my doctorate, and I want to be called a doctor just like you. Love it. I love you, Tom. You're great. You're doing a great job for all the guys out there. Really appreciate it. Every time I walk around, girls. Every time I walk around, and I tell girls, "Yeah, you listen to Tom Likas." Like I hate that guy. I'm like, "How could you hate him? You tell the truth." He's trying to help you and me at the same time. <laughs> Like William, it. thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Jack on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Messiah. Hello, Jack. Hey, I'm also one of those long time. I mean, since the AM down here in uh, L.A., um, I mean, you have pretty much been right on, on every single thing that you've I mean, taught the world about, but uh, I do have one confession. All right. Okay, um, you, you were saying something about the, uh, the size 16 model, and I brought in my warehouse guys, and we all clicked on it, and we looked at her, and we looked at each other. Who was going to crack first? And I said, you know what? I think she's hot. I'd bang her. And they, we all said, you know what? I think she's hot, too. Um, I, I mean, I... She doesn't even have real boobs. I, but her face... I, when I say she doesn't have real boobs, I mean, I, she doesn't have fake boobs, but she has those man boobs. I don't think she had any boobs until she was fat. Well, I, I, I got to say, she has a really pretty face. She's got great... Yeah, but look at her. She's so fat. It looks like Photoshop. It looks like someone Photoshopped a nice face on top of a big, fat body. 
Tom, I have really low standards. This, so <laughs> this way I'm sure to get laid. Oh, okay. You've got low standards. <laughs> and you know what? I follow all your advice sometimes, but it seems like my, my instincts are to go towards the, the, you know, the low self-esteem. I think the fat ones have the low self-esteem. Oh, yeah. And well, I, I want to tell you, uh, Chloe, the Miss England hopeful, I actually uh, took a tour. Did you hear about this? I took a tour. Uh -huh. uh, I had her spread her legs, and I did an exploratory tour, and I was like, oh, my God, look in there. Wow. I can't believe this. Oh, man. If I could, ch I fell in a couple times, let me tell you. <laughs> and, Dad, I got to tell you, you're doing a great job out there. I love you, and I'll never stop listening till the day I die. Oh, Jack, I love you for that. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 Tom. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800 866. Better to have chicks who live a little bit of distance from you, don't have time to see you. She's got three more years to finish her PhD. So. Then you seem, by the way, you seem so accommodating. Honey, you've got that PhD to study for. You take all the time you need working on that. I understand. And when you get all that free time, you bang on the chicks. That's what you do. It's the Tom Likas Show. Like his show from Hollywood on this Friday. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. We appreciate it. Okay. Here we are with wide open telephones. And we continue at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Here comes Mike on the Tom Like his show. Hello. Hello, Father. Hello, son. How are you doing, sir? Doing great. Damn glad to hear it. I've got to say my heart is pumping right now talking to you. I'm very excited. Love that. Yes, sir. I just had to call and tell you uh, how much I honestly appreciate what you're doing out there for young men like myself, uh, keeping us away from these gold-digging bitches. And, uh, you know, setting, setting the right priorities in life, sir. I just had to call in and thank you. Well, as you know, I do it as a public service. I am well aware of that, sir, and once again, I appreciate it. You are vastly underpaid, if I may say so myself. No doubt. I'll, I'll let my agent know. <laughs> uh, so I just had to say, I'm, I'm a full-time college student here at Cal State Long Beach. Um, just, uh, you know, working two jobs, working as hard as I can, still getting, uh, you know, minimum 15 credits every semester, staying full-time. Um, you know, I don't make great money, but uh, the money I do make, you know, I definitely do not spend it on the ladies. And, uh, you know, saving every penny of it so uh, one day I'd be as successful as you are. I really appreciate it. Not as much as I do, sir. I can honestly <laughs> tell you. Excellent. Thank well, you thank you much, so sir. much for that. Mike, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Here comes Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom. How yes. you doing? Great. Hey, I've got a uh, question and then a comment. All right. Um question is, who is going to take the like 101 message and spread it after you retire and you're gone? Do you have a backup? What's going to happen to your message? I have not even thought about retiring. I've got another four years to go on my contract. In fact, uh, this week was April 1st. It's four years from April 1st that my contract will be up. So uh, I haven't thought about retirement. All right. And then the comment is, I think you should extend like it's 101 to three hours. I think it's time to update it. Well, I uh, I really don't like yeah, to beat a good thing. You know what? Radio is the home of beating a good thing to death. And well, like it's 101 is good, so extend it to death. No, no. I, you don't hear what I'm saying. Radio takes perfectly good ideas. And so does television, by the way. Did you see they're going to do a spinoff of The Office? I cannot wait. Cannot yeah, wait. Yeah, well, you say that, but. You ever get the spin off some of the other shows that, that, that really stunk? I can't think of any. You can't. Well, it's because they're gone by now. Mm -hmm. 
right. Well, we'll think about it. Think about it. Three hours. And believe me, you're not the first person to suggest it. Uh, just like people want me to do Ask the Atheist every week, want me to do hate calls every day. Or, but, um, you know, I think the best thing you can do in radio is you have a good idea and you parcel it out in small portions. Radio, of course, can't avoid just beating anything to death, and that's why less and less people are listening to most radio stations, except this one. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Michael. Michael's listening to our online stream in Phoenix, Arizona. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Hey, I want to make a comment on something uh, that's really been bothering me every time I see this commercial. Uh, I'm a criminal defense lawyer here in Phoenix, and I can't speak for the entire country, but I can speak at least for Arizona, that if a man gets involved in any kind of a domestic or gets charged with a domestic violence crime and gets convicted of it, um, well, anyone who gets charged with a domestic violence crime, uh, there are you know, certain things that come with that, such as you no longer can legally own a handgun in any state. And uh, there's this commercial on for this, uh, uh, and, and it's so easy to get a, a domestic violence conviction, such as you just slam a door during a fight with your old lady and it's over. Um, things like that, or you punch a wall, whatever. Anyway, the, what I'm calling about is there's this commercial I've been viewing lately. I don't know if you've seen it, and it's, uh, it's for an auto insurance, and it shows this irate bitch on the second story window and she's throwing this poor bastard stuff at him outside of outside the window it starts with a bowling ball it's landing on somebody else's car on an innocent person's car and that's what the whole commercial is supposed to be funny about how the, the car insurance is so good it covers all this incidentals like that starts with a bowling ball she's throwing his her bo his bowling ball at him then his golf clubs then his big screen tv then his couch and of course he's down there yelling please please no don't do all this if this was the other way around, if this commercial showed a man doing this to a woman, the whole world would be up in arms. You'd be seeing this all over Oprah and everything else. And it just really pisses me off about the, the one-sided street that it's supposed to be. Oh, I, I think you're right. This. No, I, I think you're right about that. Now, that must be a local spot in Arizona because I have not seen it. Uh, I, it's, I, I don't know if it's local or not. It's, it's a national insurance company. I can't remember which one it is, but it just infuriates me every time I see it. They, they, the woman is just screaming, yelling, and just going crazy on this guy and just throwing all his stuff out this two-story window of this, like, building, like, you know, say in New York or something like that, and some innocent person's car is parked below it, and it's all just destroying this, you know, innocent person's car. And, uh, and the guy's just in there begging, please, please, and it, it's supposed to be funny, you know? Stop making me laugh. Again, I said if it was the other way around, I mean, we'd be seeing it all on Oprah and all these women around the world would be pissed off. I, I'm sure you're right about that. I'm sure. Thanks for the call, Michael. Here is Fred on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Fred. Hello there, Tom. How you doing, buddy? Doing okay. Excellent. Well, I'm just, uh, I've been trying to get on for the past couple of weeks now, but I had a quick comment about American Idol. If you saw it a few weeks ago, they were doing a throwback to the Beatles and just how... God, awful it was and embarrassing for everyone involved. They could not sing together. They couldn't hit the notes right. You mean and as opposed they, to the usual uh, stellar material that you see performed on American oh, Idol? I, I've never caught it before, but it came on the other day, and I was just appalled at what I was watching. And they had Jim Carrey on there, good old Jim, dressed as a giant elephant making a complete joker of himself. Wait a minute, was he promoting uh, that Dr. Seuss he, movie he's doing? Yeah, he's promoting Horton Hears Who, but he has a look on his face just like he hates to be there. And he even made a crack about how, oh, yeah, whenever you sign off for a Fox deal, you got to kind of be a part of all the promoting events, no matter how you feel about it. And you just saw, like, this, uh, this poop-eating grin on his face that he just had to be there and tap his little elephant hoof to every single Beetle beat that came out. Oh, my. It was awful. Awful. Well, again, do you think American Idol at one time was, you know, like uh, PBS-level programming? Uh... <laughs> no, no, no. It's definitely meant for that type of crowd. But what it is, it's just not even, oh, it's just become something not even acceptable to be put on TV anymore. And, that can, uh, and it was know, acceptable before? I'm sure there was a time when people really liked it, but now you got all this publicity. Well, no, 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 but that. there's still a time that people really like it. I mean, the show's got 28 million viewers. Ah, oh, I'm not one of them, Tom. I can't, I can't help it. All right. I can't help it. Okay.
I, by the uh, way, I, Ryan Seacrest is a great guy. I've met him. I, I, I think the world of him, and I'm thrilled that he's doing well business-wise. I think it's great. Uh, but I can't bear to watch American Idol myself, and it's not Ryan's fault. It's just, you know, that's a show for girls, little girls. That's who it's for. Very good point, Tom. Can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Marco on the Tom Likas show. Hello, hello Tom. Hello Marco. Hi Tom. I'm just wondering for those you say that in order to be successful, not to have kids. But what about those of us that already do have kids? Well, uh, you've tied a stone around your neck, and it's going to make it harder and harder to to have uh, success uh, the more children you have. Okay, so it's not divorce. Let's and, point out the fact that you today are 31 years old. Are you successful? Not successful where I want to be, Tom. That's my point. I, but I want to be successful. So you have Well, to I, I, I want a lot of things. Okay, but if I already have kids, you say that's a downturn. Right. How can I get to where you're at with a kid? Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. Yeah. Um, I'm not kidding. Highly unlikely. Uh, One of the reasons it's highly unlikely, for example, uh, when I was uh, 25 and my career was going nowhere, I was six years younger than you, and I had to do something to jumpstart my career, uh, I had to leave New York where I grew up, and I had to move to Stanton, Virginia, a town of 50,000 people. Uh, and uh, I, I moved there for a salary of $160 a week to work six days a week at a radio station. You can't do that. I got to pay more than that in child support. Yeah, well, that's my point. Tom, can you take me out Lacey Peterson style? It would be tasteless, but I could. Amber. Hey. Amber. Amber, make you happy, man. 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Moses calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. Hello. Tom, first time caller, man. Thank you, Moses. I've been listening to you for a couple years. I lost you. I used to be in Seattle, but I don't know what happened to your station there. But anyway, I've been dating this woman on and off for like, well, you know, booty calls for like a year. And I'm having a 30-year reunion for high school, and she wants to go. And I told her she can't go, so she she wants uh, to dump me now. And I'm like, what? Well, didn't your school have a thirty year reunion? I don't go I don't go to high school reunions because uh all the girls didn't talk to me in high school. I can do better than that now. Well, I understand that, but my point is she's mad because I don't want to take her. I don't want to take her because I might see somebody I haven't seen in thirty years, you know what I mean? Well, maybe it's a good time to break up with her. Well, like I say, we're not like really dating, dating, but you know, we're doing the once a week thing, you know. Well then then she's a booty call and she doesn't belong at your reunion anyway. Well, basically, yes. But well, you know, you've got to set her straight. She's not your girlfriend. She's not your wife. And therefore, she does not belong at your high school reunion. Well, basically, that's what I told her. You know, can't you go to your own reunion? What you so mad or upset about going to mine? You know, well, who you who cares I'm going to meet? Just tell her. It's a tell her there is no, there will be no discussion about this. She is not entitled to an explanation. You're not giving her an explanation. That's it. Well, I'm a t- well, I haven't talked to him. She's been texting me, but I won't answer her texts now. So. Good. I wouldn't answer her at all. You go first and then talk later. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I just wanted to call and say that, man. She got a lot of nerve. She can go to her own reunion and find someone else to go with because she's definitely not going with me. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, I got one other question for you, Tom. Yes, Moses. Is there any way I can get you on the radio in Seattle or is that over? Uh, I have no idea, Moses. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Call your local station. Thanks a lot. Later. Moses, thank you. Appreciate the call. Uh, it's Robert on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, what's up? How are you? Not much. Hey, I just wanted to know if you heard about that uh, one, supposedly that pregnant man that came out on the news or the Internet yesterday. Yeah, he was on Oprah. Yeah. Yeah, what do you think about that? Because I was tripping out. Cause, uh, uh, any man who wants to be pregnant is a complete pussy. Why would any man sign <laughs> up for that? 
That's you know what the thing that trips me out is like uh, he actually borrowed his wife's womb or her ovaries and uh, he implanted it in himself. Meow. And, yeah, <laughs> it's more than meow, man. Ugh. But uh, I just it's you know it, did you know that uh, he actually miscarried once before? Oh my God, Robert! Thanks a lot for the call. The Tom Likas Show.